Welcome to our RPG in a Box Basics video tutorial. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to make tools in RPG in a Box. So for this quick example, what we're going to do is we're going to make one of these walls destructible. Now, obviously you could make all of the walls destructible by just repeating the process on every wall. But just for now, we're going to focus on one specific wall piece. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to select this wall here and we're going to switch to the navigation editor and we're going to drag an interact line in between these two tiles here. Now I might have to do that by selecting them, holding shift, selecting this one, right click, navigation, interact. So that puts a orange interact line in between. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open this model in the voxel editor. I'm going to create a couple of frames by control D duplicating. And in fact, actually let's undo that. It's just need one. And then what we're going to do is just randomly, um, delete sections of the wall. In fact, let's do it with voxel mode. So it looks a bit or random. And then we'll duplicate that into another frame, start to delete a bit more. Let's get rid of some of the top. Let's duplicate that, get rid of a bit more. Duplicate that. Uh, in fact, get rid of all that as well. Duplicate that. Get rid of more. In fact, what we'll do is we'll switch to box mode and just do that. Do one more frame. Let's just get rid of all of that. Something like that. Okay. Doesn't have to be too precise. So we've got a six frame animation. Let's go back to frame one. And what we'll do is we'll create an animation called break. And it's going to be frame one to six. Um, so now if we play the break animation, okay, so that's the kind of thing we're going for. Okay. So save the model. And save the map. So now we're ready to create our tool. So what you need to do is you need to go to the item editor and you need to set up your item that's going to be a tool. So what I'm going to do just for the purposes of sort of showing this off, I'm going to create two tools. I've got one that's a hammer. So I've created the, the item, given it a name, created an image for it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click this uh, option here where it says tool item. We're going to turn this on. Now, when you enable tool item, you get two extra options. First of all is the interaction range, which is either adjacent or unlimited. This is basically how close to the thing that you're going to interact with do you need to be in order for the tool to work. So do you need to be right next to the thing you're about to interact with or can you be anywhere on the map? Okay. Now, uh, the next setting is also important, the script, because it's got uh, either use entity script or use global script. And use global script brings up a third option in, in and of itself. So what's the difference between the two here? Use entity script means that we're going to place a script on a entity in this case, which is what we're going to do, because we're going to place a script on the wall that tells it to look for when we use this particular item. But what we could do instead is we could use a global script and then we can set a script. And I've only got one at the moment, the initialization script. But if you had other scripts, then you could assign them to uh, the global script event. So what this would mean is if you had a combination of unlimited and use global script, then you wouldn't need to necessarily interact with anything for your tool to work. So um, uh, an example of that might be, let's say you had a book item. So let me just quickly make an item called book. I won't bother doing the image for it, but you could make it a tool and then you could say unlimited range and then use global script. And then if you had a script where it showed a widget, like a user interface thing, let's say you had a, you know, um, let's just quickly throw one together. Let's say you had a, a book widget that showed text, a 
text of your book, for example, then every time you use the book, no matter where you are on the map, you just use the book. You don't have to use it with any other object. You just use the book tool itself. It will run a script, in this case, bring up the book. So it can be like you're, you're not using the book with something, you're just using the book, okay? So tools can either be used on something or they can just be used. So that's what the global script is. It's whether it's used, in which case it's a, let's go back to the item editor, in which case it's a global script, or if it's used with something else, then you use the entity script because then you put the script on the thing you use it with. So in this case, we want to be close to the wall. So we want adjacent as our interaction range. Um, we want to delete the book. We're not using the book. This should be set on the hammer. We want to be adjacent to the wall and we want to run an entity script on the wall. Okay, so we click save and that's our hammer tool set up in terms of the item. I'm also going to do the shovel as well. So we'll just click tool adjacent use entity script. So save. Okay. The next thing we need to do is we need to go to the game configuration section panel. And we need to go to the user interface section and you need to turn on the tool item UI. If you don't turn this on, you won't be able to actually use your tools in game. So make sure this is on. Click OK. And then the last thing we need to do is make our scripts. So for this, what we're going to do is we're just going to simply go to the script editor. We'll make a new script. We'll call it tool underscore shovel. And this is just going to be a display message that says the shovel does little damage to the wall. So in other words, it's telling you that you're using the wrong tool for the job. Then we'll make another script called tool underscore hammer. And what this is going to do is this is going to play animation self because this is going to be on the wall. So it's going to play the animation on the wall model. And we want to play the break animation name. So that should play the animation that makes the wall break when you click on it with the hammer. And then what we also want to do is replace navigation self. And then we want to replace interact only. With walk and interact. and apply and save. So if we now go to the map editor, we can click on this wall and we go to the entity properties for the wall. If we open the script section of the entity wall properties, we should see we've got the trigger event section here for character uh, enters tile. In this case, oh, sorry, yes, um, it shouldn't be a tile. We need to open this in the Fox lens. So we need to save this as an object. So we'll call this wall object. Go back to the map editor, delete this wall, and we'll put our wall object in instead. So it's important to note that um, tools need to interact with items, uh, with objects, not tiles. So we'll place our wall down. We'll need to put our interact lines back. Let's just quickly click that, shift click that tile, right click, navigation, interact. So what this script is going to do when we click on the wall object, we're going to open down the scripts panel. We're going to go to trigger event. We don't want character interacts. You drop this down and once you've saved your item as tool, it will be listed here in the trigger event section for your objects. So in this case, we want to click the hammer tool uh, event and we want to assign a script to it, in this case, tool hammer. So that will then play the animation to break and replace this orange line with a green line once the wall is broken. 
Okay. Then we'll drop this down for this shovel and put tool shovel script on. So when we try and use the shovel on the wall, um, it will tell us instead that we're using the wrong tool and it doesn't do anything. So we'll save that. Okay, so here we are in game. So this is the tool uh, UI that we turned on in the game configuration. So you click that and if you have any tools in your inventory, it will cycle through them. Now I don't have the tools in my inventory, so I'm going to cheat and give myself via the console the two items I made. So one will be item 0001, that's the hammer. And then I'll give myself item 002, that'll be the shovel. So now if I close my inventory, if I click the hand icon, it will switch to the hammer. If I click again, it will switch to the shovel. And if I click again, it will switch back to the hammer. So if I click the shovel, so it's active in the tool item UI, and I hover the mouse cursor over the walls, you'll see that none of these um, show the shovel because they're the tile version of the wall. But as soon as I hover over the object, you get the shovel icon appear. That tells you that this object has a script on it for this tool that we've got active at the moment. So if I now click on the wall with the shovel, it will come back and say the shovel does little damage to the wall. So it's running that script for that tool because we assigned the tool shovel script to when we use the shovel tool. So every time I click with the shovel, it's going to run this script. However, if I now switch to the hammer and click on the wall, I break the wall and now I can walk through. Okay. Now, what's interesting is you can see that as I, I can keep clicking the wall, because obviously there's no nothing in the script that's telling it to only do it once. So you can have a global property check. You know, if it's already broken, then don't do it again, that sort of thing. Or you could um, disable the script off the event when it's done. But you can see that um, it's working. We click on the wall with a hammer and it breaks and we can then obviously walk through if that goblin wasn't in the way. So just to tidy up the script, just so you can see it being done, in this case, what we'll do is we'll say if self.property broken not equal to true, then do this, do this, and then we'll say self.property broken equals true. So now it won't run those things again because it's checking if it's true and uh, not true, but we're just setting it to true afterwards. Okay, so by not being true, it will then do all of this, but then set it to true. So now it can't repeat that process. Run it one more time. So now if I switch to the hammer, Oh yeah, got to give myself the hammer and that would help. Now if I switch to the hammer, click on the wall, the wall breaks and if I click on it again, nothing happens because it's already broken. You could even, you could add an else to the condition and that says else display message, you've already broken it, something like that. But either way, we can now walk through. So that's just a little idea of how to use tools, showing you what the options are. And in this case, setting up a simple example where you use a hammer to break a wall. Other things you could obviously do, you could use pickaxe to click on a rock and have it break the boulder or give you minerals like ore deposits, that sort of thing. Or you could have a shovel and click on the floor and it digs, you know, lots of different things you can do, but you just basically repeat the process. You have uh, an object that you assign a tool event to once you've got an item that is a tool. And then you put the script on that event for what should happen when you click on that object with the tool. Pretty simple once you know how to do how the, how it works. So there you go. So that's how tools work in RPG in a box.